hour episode that came out today? I haven't seen it yet. I did, yeah. It's pretty good. Jennifer Corbett, who is the showrunner, she has said that it's the Calm Before the Storm episode. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's it's fair, It's fair. not as intense as the last two, but it's kind of interesting. I like it. It's definitely playing into things that were set up in earlier seasons, which I like. And I also don't want to hear anybody fucking complain about episodes being filler in this show because they've been delivering on some past episodes. Yeah, they have. Saying it? Yeah, people. Have, some people have said that there's been a lot of filler in, in this show, like well, in the past, not this I, season I necessarily. I haven't, I haven't seen any like negative feedback on the show because I'm not on Twitter, mm-hmm. I'm not on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, which I also haven't seen anything about Star Wars except memes. No, I, just I think it's all right. There's a lot of people that do love it, and there's a lot. There's some people that are just nitpicky. Like I know Jack didn't really think the second episode from season three was that. He was just like, it was just kind of dull. That's what he said. He said it was kind of dull. Was the second episode The Escape? The second episode was the one where Hunter met up with the other clone children, the cadets. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was the vines. Yeah. But that's how they find out that Hem- Hemlock Space yeah, is not I, where it's located. I can see Jack's point of view for it. Was, I mean, the, the, those clone kids, it would have been nice if they kept them, if that makes sense. But they did. Kind of like, no, and they, like for a couple episodes. Yeah, so instead of, like, dropping them off immediately. Just kind of, you know, like, yeah, we're brothers. You know, you're my little brother. I really, I want, I want to train you up a little bit more. So you can get used to the galaxy, because it's way different. I have no idea how long you've been on this planet for. That's true. Or that mean- they could just take them to Pabu, where they can be safe for a little while, while they save That's other clones, yeah, I, because, I could, like... Yeah, and also live, like, a normal life. But, I don't know, it would have been nice to see, like, one or two episodes with those kids. Oh, definitely. Kind of like, uh, man, I, I kind of miss Omega. And then have, have those kids, like, hope you get Omega back i don't know they, they definitely nice see, have like, a place to come back up because they're on pabu so that's true yeah you do you know the point they, they could come back i i can't see them not coming back at least for another episode or two even if they're just cannon fodder yeah. Well, I hope they're not cannon fodder. That's pushing it. Because, I mean, they, they are like preteens. That that would be a really strong push from Filoni to have them die. They've had they've killed kids before. It's true. They've killed uh, teenagers they, in the Clone like, Wars. Like post-Disney? Not post-Disney. Yeah, say, like, post-Disney would probably be different. Yeah. Like, like after, after the buyout. I mean, if it's Carf Network we're talking about, yeah, then definitely. What the, what the whole uh, fucking Ahsoka Tano and uh, her best friend getting almost buried alive in a droid factory. Yeah. Like, that, that, that's how it's yeah. They mentioned, like, one of those kids going through, like, a fucking, like, heavy arc from, like, the first season of Clone Wars. Like, do we take prisoners? I don't. That would be fucking hard, dude. Yeah. Holy shit. That would be such a goddamn callback, especially for a preteen. That would be pretty cool. It would be awesome. I uh, really hope we do see those kids again. They have potential, especially with those two. Like, we, sh- we should just fucking leave them. And then they come back and rescue them. It would, it would be awesome to see those three become, become, become like a small squad. It would would be nice. I definitely think it's it's possible for them to show back up. I think it's pretty cool, though, that they've... Because there's a callback to a episode last season in this new episode. There's been multiple times, like, in the fourth episode, when Omega is playing the, the poker-style game with the Imperial officer. Yeah, I really like that episode a lot i love that imperial officer he was a great example of an actual officer that actually did his job right that makes sense like he understood how the underworld worked took advantage of that and uh, also used his resources to his advantage and they just kill him off it would have been nice if he was a like semi-antagonist for a couple of episodes yeah like he may- maybe killed. he could have been sent out to find omega and crosshair for the couple of the episodes when they were escaping yeah but i yeah, understand they wanted omega and crosshair to reunite with the team earlier so i understand why they didn't keep that dragon on for too many episodes yeah because you only have so many episodes how many episodes in this new east season like like eight or ten no no jesus uh there's 15 oh okay that's good that's really good i would, I would love to see more of that imperial officer but you know he's he's chow food now so yeah he got eaten by the hentai monster yeah unless he comes back with scars and he's like dead set on a vengeance which i would love to see that yeah oh my god but i think at this point they well because hemlock yeah. hasn't been in the last couple of episodes i think if anything he's our, our big bad now yeah hemlock's very interesting i like him as a character he's very quiet to himself and just you know different from his stereotypical bad guy where he's just straightforward into his research right and his goals he's not just like mustache twirling he just loves his career and he wants to get higher it's interesting interesting i thought about it the other day i was like man it would have been really cool if hemlock because he only started becoming a main antagonist at the middle point of season two yeah it, like they had rampart for the first season and half of season two and then he got sidelined mm. and arrested i think it would have been pretty cool to have hemlock from the start be the villain yeah 
Maybe. It would have worked. It would be nice to have like a mustache twirling villain, and then all of a sudden, a villain that actually means business, which is Hemlock, True. come into play. Hemlock is like an actual threat, because he has the entirety of the Imperial arsenal in his back pocket, because the Emperor gave him that. It's like, oh my god, okay, this guy means business now, because Omega is like the goddamn key to something that means something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think it would have been pretty so, cool. I think for me, I, w I just would have liked if Hemlock was the one that destroyed Kamino. Because mm, he like, he... Well, 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 what 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 all of that? Because, I mean, he wants clone DNA. No, but he stole, like, because Rampart took all the cloning equipment from Kamino and then blew it up. That's true, yeah. And, and I think it would have been pretty fitting if it was Hemlock to be like, I'm just going to take that and I'll blow up well, I mean, that facility. Well, I mean, it makes sense because, uh, I mean, the Emperor did backstab that guy in the end. He's like, yeah, okay, here's the evidence. I already have what I want. I don't care about this guy anymore. Right. Just, just throw him in prison. I mean, it's like a domino effect. It's it's very interesting. It is interesting, and I did like Rampart. He was played by Charles from Red Dead Redemption. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, I completely forgot about that. And it's really cool watching him in Red Dead 2, and he's, like, really kind, really wholesome character, and he's a complete mm. asshole in The Bad Batch. Yeah. I do like, though, with this season, as a crosshair simp, I love that we're getting him with the team finally. That's yeah. that's something that's been severely lacking, obviously. Yeah. I like that he's forming a bond with Omega. That's actually very natural. Yeah. Like he's not fully come around, but he's slowly she's chipping away at him, which I think is cool. I'm sorry. I thought this would work. You got us this far, and we're not done yet. Did they teach you Plan 72? Mm-hmm. Tech had me memorize all the plans. Of course he did. <sighs> All right, let's try things your way. Finally. I mean, it's it, you'd be a best friend with someone that you, got you out of prison anyways, but not, not like a best friend, but not like close acquaintance. And mm -hmm. then that is being your bridge to get back with your old crew, which you backstabbed. Yeah, I, I really like the scene from, I think it was the two-parter with Rex, where he's like comforting her and he's just like, are, are you good? You got your crossbow? You got your supplies? Like, you sure you can carry all that? Yeah, that's really good. I also really like the bit where she was like, you're worse than Hunter. And he's like, oh, I'm much worse. I'm much worse. Which apparently oh that was God. a late he... edition. Oh, really? It, wow. was, it was like a very like late addition to the episode. And apparently it was like the staff's favorite bit of that episode. Which I, I can understand. I mean, I mean, I mean, snipers go through a vigorous training like in real life. I mean, even, even unjustified with the, the handful of episodes I watched, main character was talking to one of the uh, one, one of his buddies. Is like you're know, talking about him being a sniper in the Afghan war. Mm. He's like, yeah. What was your longest tour? Oh, not longest tour. Like, what was your longest mission? He's like, four days. We, we had we had to watch our target and like befriend our target and yada yada yada. It's like, oh my god, that's fucking tough sitting in one spot for one day to finally take the shot. I mean, s snipers have it rough, dude. Say we, we know the Bad Batch, but we don't know how early they started in the war, how late they started in the Clone Wars. It's it's interesting. Like We have no idea how long Crosshair's been on a mission by himself without his other squad. Yeah, no, that that's something that I never even thought about. I know for, at least in the Clone Wars timeline-wise, it's very much stated, even in the Bad Batch, that they've been together pretty much since birth as a unit, since they were defective and in the same batch and that's probably how they knew 99 through training and stuff like that similar to domino squad and then they named their squad after him now the, here's the thing though they named their squad after 99 so my guess is that their squad was formed not long after he perished on camino okay it was it was 99 the uh caretaker like the janitor yeah he was he was the, the maintenance clone yeah okay okay i just want, I just want to make sure i remembered her correctly Sorry. yeah so like he died and yeah. it's actually really it's actually really cool if you go back and watch the episode where he died Echo is the one holding his body and shown to be the most broken up about it. And then later on, he ends up brandishing mm -hmm. into a team that bears the name 99. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I like that. There's also a cool detail with Echo, too, that I love, where he has the handprint on his chest. It's on his right side. And then later on, when he dies in quotations, and comes back as the Bad Batch armor for the first bit. I hate that they took this away from his armor, but in the first season, he actually has a skull on the left side of his armor, which I thought was a cool little Ooh. mirror. Nice that, yeah. I have the Hot Toys, the expensive Hot Toys of Echo with that armor. It's really cool. It's really expensive, and I'm going to keep it forever. So I <laughs> <laughs> to all you grave robbers out there that want clone trooper toys, Mark is expecting to get buried with that. <laughs> Look, if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, I've spent a lot of money on the Hot Toys, 
I hate that I bought the Mandalorian and Grogu one because I don't like that show anymore, mm. but I'm still kind of upset. Even though I love Echo, I'm upset I didn't wait and buy the Crosshair Hot Toys. I'm a little upset about that. Yeah. Because I thought about it the other day. Rex is my favorite Star Wars character. That is a known fact about me. But my favorite clone trooper. I don't think it counts to say Rex my favorite clone trooper. Even though he is. Because I was just like, well, he's a clone captain. You know? And also, you know, he's my favorite character already. To say he's my favorite clone trooper, I feel like is a bit, you know, he's taking up two spots. So I think <laughs> I've I've come to the conclusion that Crosshair is my favorite clone trooper altogether. Even though I'm sure there's people out there doing their um actuallys because I know he's a commando. I, I know. But it does doesn't matter. I don't care if Marcus, if people do, do that, I'm actually nerd emoji with the finger point. I will hunt them down and kill them for you. <laughs> I do have to yeah, say my... though, the two parter with Rex was really cool because it gave me one of the coolest shots I had ever seen in any of these animated shows where you had like Rex in the middle and you had all the clones behind him, like his ragtag team of clones in this Imperial era. I thought that was so cool. Yeah, it is nice. I think the only character that's missing though was Commander Cody. It feels weird that he's just not around. Yes. Yeah, so what is he doing by the way? He was so maybe, in season maybe. in season two he was uh shipped off on a mission with crosshair and then at the end of the episode tried to get the it was like a senator i think or a separatist leader that was um <laughs> in this uh place that they were trying to like basically they basically pulled a an osama bin laden on her little hideout they they just went in guns blazing and they they got there and she was like not willing to stand down and cody was trying to reason with her but before he could crosshair fucking like shot her and then he went awol but Rampart is the one that tells Crosshair that he went AWOL. And Rampart was a very, very, very much not a reliable dude in terms of uh, truthful information. He was a well-known liar. So it makes me wonder if maybe he's this clone assassin that's running around trying to yeah. hunt them down. It just feels weird. He was only in one episode and then he disappeared and we haven't seen him since. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know, man. I feel like it would have been pretty cool to have him there in that episode. But we got we got Baja Blast, Mountain Dew Trooper, uh, Captain Hauser, which I'm happy about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was See, great. Especially with Wolf in the last episode I watched. It, that was a really cool shot of seeing the, uh, the Bad Batch ship and uh, the Imperial ship. It's sort of like a crossroads to make to make a decision for him. Right. That was that was real. I also thought it was cool too for Wolf. Like obviously, you know, you could have him put down his weapons and be like, "I'm joining them. Fuck you guys." But I like that he doesn't. Mm. But I I really like that bit where they were just like, "Oh, but sir, they're traitors." And he's like, "Maybe, but they're clones. We owe them that." And he lets them go. And I was like, "Yes, this is this is great. This is great TV. This is yes, peak, this is peak." star wars oh man so like he knows that he's gonna get fucking like lamb blasted by like his superiors mm -hmm. and he, he's putting up all the dangers, if not his his own squad i think even part of his squad was not even clones uh, it was like half and half yeah because some were tk troopers and some were commandos and the tk troopers i believe are enlisted soldiers yeah yeah because the elite squad that crosshair had in season one were kind of like the testing grounds for the tk troopers uh before he fucking yeah. murdered them <laughs> Before he fucking capped all of their asses in one fucking yeah, yeah. blaster shot. Season one, two, it, it's, it's been a minute uh, for Bad Batch. I, it's been a minute, been a very long time since I've seen the entire series. Oh yeah, no, that's understandable. I'm actually quite surprised when I watch it with my dad, and my dad remembers details, and he's only watched some of these episodes like once. Yeah. And there's like something that comes up in this episode or like another episode. They'll mention something that happened in season one, and I'll be like talking to my dad, and I was just like, oh yeah, that was that character, and he was just like, yeah, from season one, and I was like, what the fuck <laughs> I was like wait what my dad's always been like that with star wars he always retains this stuff because he loves it too but it's always surprising you usually you gotta explain that shit to your parents right but it's nice that he's actually like paying attention and watching it because like when captain hauser showed up he was just like oh yeah that was the clone captain that had his squad when he got arrested and i was like whoa my dad's based <laughs> he remembers lore yeah see, my, my parents don't like cartoons so they, they wouldn't remember any of it so it's fine damn yeah i i just i love captain hauser so much i love him and i hate that hasbro hasn't made a figure of him yet come on guys appease to me appease to me specifically <laughs> i want your hauser figure i want it give it to me you only made one in the vintage collection he's like tiny i don't want that don't want that shit I want the big one. I want the big boy. Yeah, so, so far, good series. I mean, your episode had a man. Well, so I'll probably end up either A, watching today or tomorrow night. It's a good show. I really like it. As a clone fan, as a child, I always grew up liking the clone episodes the most. And I always wanted a show just centered around them because I love their episodes. So to actually get a show now that's essentially all about them, it, it's kind of a dream come true. And I and I really like it. And I'm really happy. And I, I get my favorite sniper boy back. With... So much you can do with just like background 
background characters of not even background characters just like the actual army of like the rebel armies the imperial clone troopers i mean even the droids to a point you have so many like fucking possibilities with just those four armies oh to, yeah like, totally. delve into those stories and just development in general well i remember as a kid when clone wars was still on and it didn't get canceled i always thought oh they could do a sequel show where it's about luke han and leia similar to how it was like anakin mm. obi-wan and ahsoka and you could have all kinds of new characters and returning characters that don't die in the clone wars and have it set in between like empire strikes back and return of the jedi you know yeah oh like, well in, in that case yeah, i guess yeah. you couldn't have han i, I was saying I mean, if you want to talk about like background characters like the, the background of background characters you could have like a, like a high-ranking like rebel like sergeant or commando a, after the imperial war just fall from grace become a bounty hunter and just you know have like conflicting interests of like yeah i'm the good guy but at the same time i need to take care of myself and pay for my food and my ship <laughs> the caretaker of my guns i gotta do something very interesting to see like you know the good guy kind of go into like the gray matter of the good and evil yeah totally but i don't know if disney would ever go that far no they're too busy making uh the fucking acolyte show which is a show set a hundred years before the phantom menace where characters don't know what sith are because they've been dead for like centuries and the jedi are like whoa what's that is that a sith and then they pull out like 40 lightsabers and fight this and I, I feel it makes me feel like mike stoklasa man i'm just like it's boring i've seen this shit yeah, before someone is killing jedi it doesn't make sense he was trained in the jedi art my only conclusion can be that it was a sith lord impossible the sith have been extinct for a millennium i do not believe the sith could have returned without us knowing what happened i sensed darkness ah Hard to see the dark side is. We will use all our resources to unravel this mystery. We will discover the identity of your attacker. Like what I've been saying, like, oh, I can't remember the quote, but it's basically like, uh, how do you feel after like this X amount of years seeing everything you love being torn down and destroyed? Are you happy about that? And he's like, no. And I really don't care anymore. How does it feel to have lived long enough to see all of your favorite franchises go down in flames? Feels great. <laughs> That's the one thing that I loved about Bad Batch, though, is that it respects its past with, uh... Yeah, well, it's got, like, a bunch of the original animators, not animators, like, writers and directors from the Clone Wars coming back into that. Mm-hmm. I don't know how Disney doesn't see what they have for potential. Just to, like, hey, everyday man becomes semi-hero, then kind of falls down. That's the human experience. You have ups and downs. It's it's fun to see that. Disney is... There, there, there's so much you can say about Disney. I mean, you, you could say that like they're too foregone and, like, woke and all this bullshit, or they're just, you know, not paying their writers enough. But there's they, they need to know what's going on with, like, the semi-middle class. Like, hey, we kind of get what you're going through, and we will write about that, but I don't think they ever will. True. Yeah. I, I remember when Rogue One was coming out and they were just like, this is going to be a, a movie all about the rebels fighting the, the empires. And I was thinking, oh, it's going to be like Band of Brothers, but the rebels. And it just wasn't. No. Oh my God. Is that Jimmy Kimmel running out with his Jeep? <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I brought some supplies. That is a real thing, by the way. You, I, I am not joking. Jimmy Kimmel one of the late night hosts comes in a jeep and he brings ammo and he was so bad at driving that jeep that they had to push his jeep to make it look like he was driving that's hilarious in that scene that's hilarious yes. oh my god i i just think that like with the bad batch like it does a good job of respecting its past and its characters and it builds off of how we left off the one thing that just kind of sucks is that because you know rebels exists yeah we kind of know the outcome people, i i need to go back and give it a fair chance but i don't know man i know people like it I, 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 but going off your word of uh, of a true like clone wars fan i get it i mean there's people online that love that series but i would love to give it a fair chance and see if my take on it i have i used to have a cross street neighbor and he used to watch it with his daughter all the time and he loved it and the, this back when i was like kind of younger i was like yeah it's okay it's kind of bad he was like what that was pretty good see the thing i don't like about rebels is that it's basically just the original trilogy characters but different you got the wise jedi master who has the young apprentice who finds out that he has his force powers and he's gonna train him under the ways of the force then you got the the female hotshot pilot and you got the big giant monkey man who's actually uh, like character replacement for chewbacca and he's literally chewbacca concept art which doesn't help the comparison then you got the the wisecracking droid r2d2 but this time he's orange 
And then you got um the other female character, the the Mandalorian. And just, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's just like you know, it's it's just kind of all copy and paste. Like we've eh, we've seen it before. And they have a ship and they fly around their ship. And I find it so hilarious that the first season had all these new characters and like I don't know if they didn't have m- enough faith in it. But then randomly at the end of season one, they're like, oh, Ahsoka's here. Season two, oh, Hondo's here. Oh. Captain Rex is here. Do you remember the Clone Wars characters? Do you remember them? They're they're in the show now. Rex becomes a main part of their crew in the second season. And it was like, Jesus Christ. At the end of season two, it's like, Darth Maul's here. Remember Darth Maul? Oh, season three, Emperor Palpatine's here. And it's like, okay, guys, but what about your story? <laughs> Yes, the Bad Batch has its fair share of cameo characters, but at its core, it's about the Bad Batch, you know? And we're not putting in, like, Baby Finn from the sequel trilogies. Say, I mean, the Bad Batch has its its cameo, uh, like, entries. I mean, even the Emperor shows up in in Season Mm 3, but he's there for a goddamn reason. He's there to see a a very, 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 very expensive thing that's being funded by the Empire, which is, like, reincarnation. That's serious business. Which I always found I mean, funny about that scene. Isn't... All the troopers were running around all, like, frightened and stuff like that. They were, like, getting everything ready. And having worked in, mm. a, in a big business with managers and big wigs, when the, whenever the big big guys come to inspect the store, everyone's yeah. running around all crazy. I just thought it was so funny that they're just like, he's coming, he's coming. And I remember thinking, I was like, oh, it's probably the Emperor. And then he just strolls up and everyone's just like, yeah, yes, everything is in order. Everything is everything is good. Everything is fine. L- look at the yeah, reincarnation no, it, chamber. My boss. My boss is the same way now you say he's even worse than ever i mean i love my store manager to death he's, he's a good guy he's he's your typical good old southern man but ever since our ceo moved five minutes away from our store he has been so fucking stressed damn so he he, he relies on everybody in the store especially us night crew to make sure the store is prep looks good and ready to go in the morning which is completely fine because you know, as, as long as we're on top of it and ready to go it's fine but this this is a whole different deal but i understand what you, you mean mm-hmm. especially you know if your boss is the like the old time powerful emperor of the galaxy who you know gives you your wishes and spending money and your job. Right. If he doesn't like you, he kills you. He kills you I mean, or imprisons me, you. If I don't get my job crazy, I don't get killed. But. Yeah, no. I just really like the direction it's heading. I like how darker this season is, too. It's very. It's very consistent. I like that uh, a lot of stuff is happening in the sense of, like, a lot of lasting stakes. So, like, the last couple of seasons, Rex has been listed as MIA. Everyone thought he was dead. Yeah. And now the Empire knows that he's alive because of Wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it was only Wolf that saw him, he could cover that up. But all those troopers saw him yeah. now. So it's it, it's kind of funky. Yes, and only that. Wolf said, like, Rex, I thought you died in that ship crash. Right, yeah. Like the Empire lies about a lot of things, Wolf. I really like that line too, where Rex was like, "Yeah, I lost a lot of good men that day and today." Yeah. I was like, "Damn, this poor man can't catch a break." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were dead. Reports said you were killed in action. That you went down aboard an attack cruiser. Oh, I did. I lost a lot of good men that day. And today. There's a really cool reference in the Siege of Mandalore episodes when Maul's going through the hallway slaughtering all those clones. There's one clone that gets like pinned against the wall with a piece of debris that Maul throws at him. Yeah. And uh, one trooper yells into his comlink, Ridge is down. And if you go back to the Clone Wars movie when they're landing on Teth before they climb up the mountain, one of the clones who had problems activating one of his HUD lights, his name was Ridge. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Wow. And, it, and, it, and I remember a lot of people at the time where they were like, damn, only Dave Filoni would really tug at our heartstrings to the hardcore fans to kill off one of the first named clones in the movie in the final episode of the show. Man. Because he was like probably one of the first real like background clones that got a name on screen in the, in the series. It's a good thing those bugs can't aim. <laughs> <laughs> your clone realize that you have no Jedi's in your ship. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> when you're in the gunship and there's no main characters on board. No, I, I gotta say, we're at the, I think now we're at the halfway point. I think there's seven episodes left. Yeah. And it's gonna be sad. This is uh, sort of an end of the era story. If this is the la- the yeah. last of the clone storylines for a while or, you know, whatever they do. Enjoy it well last, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I got all my action figures. I got all the bad bitch I mean, their season yeah, one sure. outfits because, you know, I'm not buying every variant like a fucking maniac. All I know is that The Clone Wars, really good. Bad Batch, very, very good companion series. And I'm really, really happy with how they've handled everything and how they haven't completely
completely bastardized the characters like they did on Rebels. They didn't do a bad job on Rex. I'll give them that. Rex wasn't too bad. The homeless hermit, Marcus. <laughs> No, I understand. I understand the story they were trying to tell that he was like retired and left the fight. It's just the problem is with Rebels is that they didn't really explain why. That's what always bothered me. This show might actually explain why he stopped fighting. That is true. I never liked the idea at the time that Rex just gave up because that wasn't in his character. I figured you went out of the fight just yet. I spent my life defending the Republic. Can't stop now. The Republic's gone, Rex. Ah, uh, not all of it. We're here. Others are out there, too. I mean, if you understand, Marcus, imagine yourself as a small renegade soldier group from a country that's moved on and you want to keep the old ways and save your brethren. No, but Thomas, I mean, this, there's, this is the problem. There, there, in, Re there, there, in Rebels, they never told us that. That is true, yeah. He was, it, I mean, the Empire's huge. You have so many resources and ways to track you and destroy you. I mean, if you want to go from that point of view, it's like it's a fruitless battle. I mean, they're about this. I mean, I don't know about the newest episode of, of this time put date here. I, I haven't seen the newest episode, but imagine breaking into like a high federal prison today with the weapons you have now and the expertise. It's very hard. No, and I get, if you I do get succeed, that. the Empire is going to adapt to that. They're not dumb. No, I get that. But also at the like in Rebels, it was just Rex just seemed fine, and it was just like it always rubbed me the wrong way. I was like, well, why is Rex like from from the knowledge that that episode gave us? It just seemed like the Empire took over, and Rex was just like, well, well, that's it. And that's not Rex. Rex would have at least tried. So I like that the Bad Batch is showing us that he wasn't willing to just stand showing, down. The Bad Batch is showing him that he tried, and I can see Rebels showing him that he kind of gave up. I mean, try launching a revolution today in the United States. It's very hard, no matter if you're right wing or left wing. It's mm -hmm. very hard. Hopefully they explain that. I mean, I mean, it's really easy to see that the Empire had complete control. Uh, they had clones on their side that were willing to tell them strategies that the clones would try to do in like, future encounters or previous encounters or present encounters. It's very hard to free your brothers from captivity or just try to uh, the grasp freedom from a tyrannical government of that size. I mean, we're not talking like country size. We're talking like galaxy size. Mm -hmm. It's it's very hard. I, I, I can see how how that's demoralizing if rebels didn't explain that that's dumb that that's the thing though because we didn't know for the longest time why he stopped and we still don't know why fully and that's why this is more <clears throat> interesting because in rebels like i said it just seemed like he was just like ah oh, the empire took over so then i just gave up and then i ran away with <clears throat> gregor and wolf and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know. I mean, if, if you want to go off of the episode I'm off of right now, like imagine like Wolf giving like like a counter report compared to like a like a normal soldier report. Like imagine Wolf saying, Yeah, uh, we gave our best, um, but they managed to escape. And then all of a sudden you have a TK trooper, like a normal civilian trooper, like, oh yeah, we just kind of let them go. <laughs> Right. That would tell the Empire, yeah, clones are not to be trusted. They are not inferior. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, counterproductive, and they're connected too closely to one another. Mm -hmm. um, and the Empire has intel that, yeah, okay, we have a large renegade clone army coming in to free their brothers. How about we just do this to demoralize them? Just take everyone out that's of asset and then just jump warships that we know they don't have numbers to take care of and just orbital bombardment all of it the civilian population will never know because the empire is too vast massive clone numbers in that person will be gone we already have what we want from those clone numbers so who fucking cares those clones can be replaced via civilian population via propaganda and it will show our enemies like yeah we mean fucking business. Lay off and we will not bother you unless provoked. I mean, I could see Rex going fucking mental over that. Like, yeah, okay, the Empire has the guns. We don't have the resources to take care of this. Strategically, this is a futile effort. Which is definitely, I think, the direction that they're going in, for sure. It's just yeah. nice to finally get that info. Yeah, saying that, 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 that'd be great. People forget the Empire means business. Episode 5 is a good example of the Empire means business. But they, they always go after Episode 6 
Empire's like, yeah, the second Death Star got destroyed, whatever. The Empire means business, especially mm -hmm. in the in the early mid states where they had the resources and the um, actual talent to do this before right. they got corrupt and uh, overextended. Right. Yeah, no, I think uh, it's going to be interesting seeing where they're going to lead with this next couple of episodes. I'm kind of hoping the way I would end Bad Batch is mm -hmm. basically you because it seems like the whole goal is to storm Mount Tantus and yeah. save the remaining clones. I think they should go ballsy and they should have this play out and there's a little bit of hope you know rex gets in there gets his crew gets all the clones you know the bad batch are there and then you know they're escaping and then what happens the empire it basically catches them in a trap yeah <laughs> they, they know they're coming because omega and also her teacher is basically then they like resist right so i really hope this i always forget the main antagonist's name like he, he's smart to know that this is coming right i basically thought like okay you could just wipe most of the characters out mm -hmm. what what would make captain rex stand down and go into hiding and like basically just give up the fight you know if, if he's in the midst of like trying to get his clone brothers out and he's watching all of them get mowed down he has echo with him and he you know maybe echo like runs out to save him and gets fucking blown away captain hauser could get killed and maybe some of the bad batch could even die it, it's really shown yes, the severity I... of the situation of like holy shit the empire is way too powerful i have no chance i just have yeah. to get out w while i still can your numbers extra firepower and watching people that you love die will completely destroy your morale yeah and say and to that point where it would be safer for your clone brothers to basically if if they're still in service and they're subservient to be retired even though you have no idea what's going to happen to them but to just to just be like retired naturally i don't think is happening because i mean and there, there's clones that want to get away from it even during the republic times like you remember that one episode with the rex when he got shot and he was saved by that clone farmer with his family right there, 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 there's clones that care about their own lives i mean it's gonna happen i mean it, it even happens here in you know like real world like, people that care about themselves that are just joining the army or any branch of service is like i just want to do this to support my family but once i'm done I'm done. But if you're just a regular clone on your own and you have no future and you're not thinking about that, it's different. Right. But if you're like Crosshair or any of the other, other Renegade clones and you're smart enough to basically leave or desert, you could do that. Right. And just kind of hide because the galaxy is a big place. The Empire can't be everywhere, but it's still all right. Yeah. It's very complex. As, st as simple as Star Wars is, it's still very complex in, yeah. in the eyes of the everyday man and the everyday clone. I just think that if I'm being honest, the animation of Star Wars, like, often gets overlooked by a lot of people. Yeah. And and that also helps in their favor because they can get away with a lot of darker shit. And they, like, my, my parents don't care about the, like, cartoons. They, they call it cartoons. They mm -hmm. don't care. Right. My, my dad will watch it because he loves Star Wars, but it's, it's still kind of like a cartoonish animation style and he's not into that. I, I get it. Mm hmm showing someone that hates anime anime it's, right. it's not gonna work no i can show like the best action anime i know which is black lagoon it's like hey this is just like the hollywood stuff you watch with a little bit darker undertones and you love it but you know it doesn't help with like, the sexual like context and some of the other stuff that that shows anime as anime it, it doesn't work no yeah yeah no i'm just really excited to see what they do with the final season with the remaining numbers that they have of episodes i'm hoping they wrap it up in a in a nice little bow. I can't see them killing Omega. I have a feeling that they're gonna oh, keep, they're gonna keep her. I'd around. be very. I, I think it would be pretty interesting. I've heard a theory floating around that the unlikely pairing would be that the Bad Batch get killed except for Crosshair, and he's the one left in charge Ooh. to basically raise Omega on his own. Okay. So basically, like the one guy that kept pushing everybody away has now opened himself yeah. up and has to protect the the girl that his brothers basically introduced him to. Oh, I would love that. That would be that. That'd be really good i they've been growing a, a pretty big bond in the in this season so i think it could work yeah but uh i'm hoping whatever they do that it's a good ending to the bad batch characters you know these characters have been around I mean, for a good bit like even back in the unfinished episode days they never show up in like later entries so i mean it's basically sealed i mean i'd be surprised if they live and they just say oh yeah i'm gonna go into hiding and they never show up I i'd be surprised if they let them live yeah because the big outlier you know, is, is is that uh in rebels echo is nowhere to be seen yeah 
And a part of that is also because Rebels came out after season five and six of Clone Wars. So Echo hadn't been revived yet in season seven. But those stories were in development. And in Rebels, Rex does mention the Siege of Mandalore. So Dave Filoni was always treating the unproduced episodes as canon. Okay. And it's the same reason why Cad Bane has that metal plate on his head in the Bad Batch when he shows okay. up. Because Boba Fett fucking shot yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, they, they've he always treated those unproduced episodes as still canon to the universe even if he didn't mm -hmm. make them so it's just like okay well if echo was so important to rex in season seven and in the bad batch and you know he's basically rex's right hand man right now mm. and he's nowhere to be seen in rebels obviously it's just because you know it's made after or it was made before and vice versa when yeah so it's like they obviously didn't think to mention echo so it's like how are you going to explain that you can clearly tell that rex and echo mean a lot to each other as friends and brothers yeah. um, and it would be I think unrealistic to be like oh yeah Echo just goes into hiding and doesn't go with Rex yeah I can get that that's that why I, be, I think uh... having Echo die for Rex would be the catalyst for him to be like nah I gotta I gotta back down I gotta get out of this yeah I, I could see that yeah you also have that line that he said at the end of his two-parter where he was like you know I thought the end of the war meant the end of losing all of our brothers and I, I was wrong so who knows it's gonna be very interesting I, I hope that the show ends with uh, Crosshair doing the gritty <laughs> Omega, watch me, watch me do the gritty. <laughs> I think my red. <laughs> oh my god, Buster, you did the, the, the Empire with your dance moves. It was so funny seeing him do the gritty, and in the background, it's just like all the Empire ships are just exploding for no reason. Oh my god, gosh, he's doing the gritty. Oh man, I thought I could do a pearl, but here I am. Record tries to do the gritty, and he fucking slips like on a banana peel and explodes. Oh man, I thought I could do the gritty, but I can't. Crosshair, you need to. 